see that most of the audience are uh, women. <laughs> That's very inspiring. First, I would like to thank the organizing uh, committee for inviting me to be here today. I am really super happy to be able to attend and participate in this exciting event. So today, I will be talking about the research that I do with my research fellows at Qatar Biomedical Research Institute in Doha. So uh, as you can read, I will uh, focus more on exploring the potential role of a protein named alpha-synuclein as diagnostic target for Parkinson's disease. Uh, so just a brief introduction about myself for those who don't know me. So I am a pharmacist. I did my pharmacy in Latakia. That's my hometown in Syria. And did my master in biomedical sciences at uh, College of Medicine and Health Sciences in UAE University and recently uh, completed my PhD at uh, VU University from Amsterdam, Netherlands. I am currently working as a postdoctoral researcher at Qatar Biomedical Research Institute. And to those who are fans of Stars of Science TV show, I am the second place winner of season 10. So uh, before I start uh, talking about my research, I would uh, briefly uh, describe what Parkinson's disease is. So Parkinson is a chronic, progressive, age-related neurodegenerative disorders. It affects more than 10 million people worldwide. Of the many famous faces with Parkinson's disease, you might recognize Michael J. Fox and Muhammad Ali Klai, whom both significantly supported the research for Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is mainly sporadic, so it's idiopathic, but can also be familial, meaning that genetic factors can be involved. Of the many different symptoms that a Parkinson's disease patients usually present with, resting tremor is perhaps the most common symptom that you would usually notice in a loved one that would make you get them checked. However, a lot more happen in Parkinson's disease. There's a pradykinesia, and that's the slowness of the movement. Movement becomes more of a shuffling rather than walking. And then also there is uh, muscle rigidity, where it becomes very stiff and painful to move the muscles. Unfortunately, till date, there is no cure for Parkinson's disease. However, there are many treatments, symptomatic treatments, that can help alleviate the symptoms and improve the quality of life for patients living with Parkinson's disease. Perhaps the most ugly truth about Parkinson's disease is the lack of diagnostic test. Till today, there is no blood test or scan that a patient with Parkinson's disease can simply do that would confirm his or her diagnosis. Till date, the diagnosis is mainly based on the clinical criteria. And unfortunately, there are many high rates of misdiagnosis, misdiagnosis rates that have been reported. Now, let's look at Parkinson's disease at the molecular level. So we will talk about protein, my favorite protein, alpha-synuclein. So it was in 1997, I hope most of you were born by then, when uh, uh, this year marked a major milestone in our understanding of Parkinson's disease, because it was the first time a genetic link was found between a protein named alpha-synuclein and Parkinson's disease. In the same year, later that year actually, the main pathological hallmarks that define Parkinson's disease, which are Lewy bodies and Lewy neurites, were identified to be mainly composed of the same protein that is alpha-synuclein. The discovery was made by Michel Goddard and Maria Spellantini and Jake, uh, who were the first people to uh, establish a link between a pathology and a protein named alpha-synuclein. Uh, Parkinson, uh, alpha-synuclein, sorry, is, it's a small protein, and uh, it is uh, produced in our neurons. It's also found in different biofluids. It is found in our blood as well as in the cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, it's a dynamic protein. It can adapt different conformations and can also be subjected to different modifications where phosphorylation is the most studied one. Under normal conditions, the protein exists, as we can see, as a small monomers, unfolded monomers. However, 
under certain circumstances that we don't still yet fully understand, the protein start to adapt a different conformation. These monomers start to come together, forming a clumps of oligomers. These oligomers are believed to be the neurotoxic species of the protein. And then these oligomers start to maturate, forming these chains of fibrils that eventually form Lewy bodies and the winurites, the pathological hallmarks of the disease. So what I tried to do in my research, I was trying to understand how can we today take advantage of this aggregation process to identify biomarkers that can help me predict or detect the disease at the earliest stage possible, as well as monitor the disease progression. Before I, I mean, go further details in uh, the project, I would just like to simplify some of the terms that I will come across. So the first one will be biomarkers, because I'm going to keep repeating, repeat myself saying biomarkers discovery, biomarkers discovery. So what is a biomarker? Uh, marker is, biomarker is nothing but an indicator of a certain process in our bodies. It could be a physiological process, a pathological process, or even a response to a treatment. What is an antibody? I believe all of us are familiar with this concept. These are the proteins that are produced by our immune system to fight the intruders. What is a cohort? Because I'm going to come across the uh, two different types of cohorts, a cross-sectional as well as longitudinal. Both of them are observational studies. Cross-sectional means that the study was done at a single time point. However, longitudinal, as the name indicates, it means that these subjects were followed up to a certain period of time. ELISA, which uh, uh, and the lab, they call me ELISA Queen. So it's uh, actually an immunoassay where we try to uh, quantify a certain protein in a sample. It could be blood sample or any kind of, of sample, even could be, I mean, brain tissues. So uh, what I did to uh, take advantage of alpha synuclein in, in our bodies, so the first challenge we faced in identifying biomarkers for Parkinson's disease was the lack of tools that can specifically quantify the toxic form of the protein. So there is the good form and the bad form, and they equally exist in our systems. So the question was how to develop a tool that can specifically target the toxic form of the protein. And that's what we did. So we generated novel antibodies from mice using the hybridoma technology. And these antibodies, as you can see, are able to specifically target the pathogenic form of alpha-synuclein, sparing all other forms of the protein, as well as all other proteins. Because when we are talking, with, talking about a blood sample, it's complex. It's enriched with different proteins and different forms of the same protein. So that was the biggest challenge, and that was achieved by developing these confirmation-specific monoclonal antibodies. And again here, as we can see, these are uh, brain sections from patients with Parkinson's disease as well as healthy controls. And we can clearly see that these antibodies were able to specifically stain the pathology, sparing any uh, normal protein that exists in healthy controls. So the next question was, how can I today utilize these antibodies and employ them to develop assays, ELISA assays mainly? So that's what I did. I was playing with these antibodies for almost two to three years before I was able to uh, have the first validated ELISA assay. So it's a sandwich-based ELISA. So basically, we have one capture antibody, and then you add your sample, and then we have one detection antibody. So just being able to find the optimal pair is a big task. So uh, once an assay is established, there are um, in certain I mean, battery of assessments that any assay has to go through. These include the specificity of the assay. So I have to prove that the ELISA would specifically quantify the uh, toxic form of the protein and it, that it is reproducible. So if I run the same samples over different days, would I be able to achieve the same results? And then whether this assay is capable to quantify this protein in different biofluids. So we have tested uh, um, tissues from mice, from human blood, as well as CSF. And we were happy to see that we were able to quantify our protein of interest. 
Another assessment that has to be done, it's called the spike and recovery. It's a measure of the assay robustness where a protein is spiked in the sample and then you uh, try to check if your assay is capable to quantify that protein that was spiked. So all these assessments, uh, the ELISA has successfully, I mean, uh, passed. So the next uh, task was today how to use now these assays in cross-sectional cohort. So I had CSF samples from patients with uh, early Parkinson's disease, as well as from healthy controls, and using this battery of assays, I tried to look at the different forms of alpha synuclein. So I looked at the total form of the protein, the oligomeric form, which is believed the neurotoxic form, as well as the phosphorylated form. And it was very exciting to see that the pathological form of alpha synuclein, mainly the oligomeric forms, were significantly elevated in patients with Parkinson's disease compared to the healthy controls. This study was published in 2016, and it has been cited over 80 times since then as the first study to employ novel assays and novel antibodies to measure samples, to measure CSF samples from patients and controls. Now, the next challenge was we would like to not only to have biomarkers for diagnosis, but also for progression, because it is very important for us today to understand how these patients are progressing over the course of the disease. And in order to do that, we have used exactly the same assays in a longitudinal cohort. So the subjects here were followed up for two years. And we found that the levels of oligomeric alpha synuclein were significantly increased over the two-year follow-up, emphasizing the role of alpha-synuclein species as progression markers for Parkinson's disease. Perhaps the most important goal is to identify the individuals at risk. I think that's the question that we all ask ourselves today in the room, how many of us are at risk of having Parkinson's disease and can we detect that earlier? So in order to answer that question, we have looked at subjects at the pre-symptomatic stage meaning that they have not yet developed the symptoms. But how do we know that they will develop the symptoms? So basically, these subjects has a mutation in the gene called LARC2, and these are, this is the most common cause of familiar Parkinson's disease. So we know that these patients are at the highest risk of developing Parkinson's disease. However, what we did different in the study is that we went beyond alpha synuclein. So we have measured 40 different inflammatory markers, the different forms of alpha synuclein, as well as Alzheimer's disease classical biomarkers. And to our surprise, we were able to see that patients who are at high risk of developing Parkinson's disease, the ones that are uh, labeled as asymptomatic carriers, had much higher levels of alpha synuclein oligomers, as well as the pro-inflammatory marker tumor necrosis alpha, distincting them from the healthy controls and from the Parkinson's disease subject. I think the main question is, why are we doing this? Why are we doing all this research? So as I mentioned earlier, the clinical criteria is suboptimal. So uh, my approach was how today we can find a way between the clinical symptoms and the biology of Parkinson's disease to be able to provide an early detection for Parkinson's disease. Early detections will ensure the early therapeutic intervention and will also improve the quality of life for patients living with this devastating disorders. And this is exactly where CABI stands at. So CABI is an ELISA kit that uh, take a blood sample from the patients or from the subjects and will measure specifically the form of alpha-synuclein oligomers to try to give us to be an indicator for the stage of either this patient at which stage they are, or are they at high risk of having Parkinson's disease. That's the hope that CABI will be able to provide an early detection for Parkinson's disease, hoping that this will significantly contribute to improving the life of patients living with Parkinson's disease. With that, I want to uh, thank you very much for being here today and uh, also try to visit our laboratories at uh, QBRI. Thank you very much. <laughs>